all men millenniums ago were indigenous. But with the advent of civilization and invention, a clash of cultures would take place that would change the face of the world forever. These men were not evil, but ignorant. And in the discovery of new lands, this ignorance and insensitivity wiped out the indigenous cultures they came in contact with. And today, we see the error of their ways. However, not every ancient culture is extinct, and there is a nation within a nation that wants to heal and reconcile their land, not just for them, but for the approximately 500 other Aboriginal nations that want to preserve their distinctive lands, cultures, beliefs, and languages. For example, the didgeridoo is not part of our culture. It is a culture that belongs, or part of, a culture that belongs in the northern parts of Australia, the Territory for example. So it's important for them and other Indigenous nations to embrace the fact that here is an opportunity to share with others, be it white, black, people from around the world, what one of the longest standing Indigenous cultures in the world have to offer. The fight to preserve these distinctions is the legacy that is Waterall. You need to understand. You need to learn. When I first introduce myself to people and they find out I'm Aboriginal, one of the things they say is, what percentage are you? So all of me. It doesn't matter how much milk you put in a cup of coffee, it's still a cup of coffee. It's not the colour, it's what's inside that counts. You're born with that sense, and I really believe that it is part of you, no matter how white you are, it's still innate, it's still there. It's just a shame in society now that um, Aboriginal identity and culture people perceive as a physical look and a physical colour because us as Aboriginal people, it's in our heart, you know, and our spirit, our culture and our identity. And um... the Aboriginal spirit to me is just to be a part of something bigger than you, to be a part of, you know, the land and the people. It's just, it's just sort of in you, like it's just that passion within you that, that you want it to, to continue on, to create a legacy. Because as far as uh, the academics were concerned, Wadarung had been extinct for over 90 years. Some say what's done is done and there's no coming back. And that might be true for some, but not for all. But can the Wadarong Nation still survive? So it can, because we are. You know, I don't want it just to be a piece of paper saying you are of Aboriginal descent or you are a, a member of a Wadarong. It's just a piece of paper. It's just time to get real, because there's a lot of people who think that real Aboriginals are only black, and that every culture played the didgeridoo. I know I did, but that's not the facts. The irony is, it's the white Waterong that are left to preserve their culture after the whites destroyed it. The Waterong and all indigenous communities have to step out of the shadow of the past and proactively stand in the light of the future by utilizing the tools that are set before them. The Wadarong are facing extinction and if we don't preserve that history and culture for the next generations, it will be lost for good. Traditions are not meant to be lost but shared and the spiritual connection in all things should never be overlooked. Technology with all its advancements can never replace relationship and all that goes with it. Wrongs have been made that can never be corrected but a legacy worth remembering can still be created. We start off in the past because that's where we're based. That's where we get our strength from, we get our identity. In 1835, when the Port Phillip colony was founded, the Wadarong numbered between 1,500 to 3,000 people, but through killing, disease and mistreatment, were thought to be extinct. And my heart breaks when I look back at how our ancestors were treated in society and until you walk the walk with them I don't think you can ever truly understand how cruel the world was towards them. In the late 1970s and early 1980s 
a bloodline was discovered and the Wadarong were reborn. Prior to 67, Mum could work in the kitchen of a pub but wasn't allowed to go into the lounge or the bar for a drink. She wasn't allowed to own property. Her name wasn't allowed to be on the, on the title of the house that Mum and Dad built. And I remember Mum, um, when the results of the referendum were announced, she was crying because she says, I'm finally real, I'm finally human. The past is our history, heritage and culture. And our present is preserving that past, but reaching out to a future that is sustainable and creates a new way of thinking. Most people don't know that there are over 500 distinctive Aboriginal lands, cultures and languages within Australia. And the sad fact is that some cultures are extinct. And others, like the Wadarong, that were thought to be extinct, can only be resurrected by tenacity and modern research. Today, Indigenous people make up 2 to 3 per cent of the total population. Yet they are the heartbeat of this great land, and their spirit defines Australia and all that it is today. The struggles are real, but the spirit lives on, and Indigenous and non-Indigenous people are coming together to preserve the Wadarong culture. I have an Aboriginal partner, I have an Aboriginal son, so I like to think I'd like to do what I can to assist them in protecting what's, what's left. And I think in this country, we are very lucky that we have a living culture. It, Aboriginal people are still here. It's not that they stopped existing in any sense. There's um, so much that was taken from Wadawurrung people that um, some that I'll never be able to recover. Too much time is being wasted destroying the statues of the past and fueling the curse of division that has no future. Throwing money at a problem doesn't change it but investing in ideas that create solutions by helping others does. Every situation has a story, and there's always a reason why we're here. But eventually the past must become the past, and action needs to be taken towards the future. It's not about giving people fish indefinitely, but helping them become fishermen. It's not about giving handouts that keep people stuck, but a hand up through solutions that empower people, through an outlet that is sustainable and allows doors to open to existing industries like education, new media and tourism that provide future opportunities for young and old. And heard about the volunteer work that I was doing with Aboriginal young people in the region and how I was giving them opportunities and connecting them with their culture said I had 45 children dance this year and to be able to grow them and be able to have some Aboriginal choreography and have some traditional costumes and that for them. That's why we have this organisation so that we can go in, we can have a voice and we can protect our sites, our culture and our burials. And you have to be really careful that you don't lose sight of what your ultimate aim is, and that is to preserve the culture of the Wuthering people and to make sure that the next generation knows. To, to include everyone, to be inclusive, is the biggest part of what we're trying to create, and I think that's the biggest part of what we stand for. So to exclude people it just goes against everything that, that we want for the going forward for the future. But if people have a good heart about it and they have the right intention and they have the right spirit within them that, that they know that that they can do good from this, then 100%, that's exactly what we want. It's time for change, but it's also time for respect, understanding and nurturing. Aborigines never believed in owning land because the land owned them. And it's through the land that the Wadarong Nation will survive by creating a cultural centre where all peoples can come and learn what it means to be Wadarong. It will be a place where ancient and modern culture come together to provide Aboriginal youth an outlet to explore their identity and create their own legacy in this modern age. When we talk about a cultural centre, why can't we be another successful operation like Sovereign Hill and Ballarat? 
There's no reason why we can't. You just need vision, stakeholders that are prepared to share that vision and support it. And we, as the Wathorong Nation, are then educating, teaching, showing, experiencing what our culture represents. I think what people need to do is have a physical connection to our stories and to our areas. But we need to look to the future because we need to ensure that our culture doesn't die out. And that's what I'm scared of, that the young ones coming up today aren't embracing that heritage they have. Sharing of our culture and connecting people with culture, it's often seen as charity and I think it's really important that people are acknowledged and valued and supported, whether it's financially or in other aspects, that we're supported to continue to do this. Because if we are, there'll be more outcomes like I've been able to achieve with the young people dancing. With visionary companies like Bar and Water and others, and the volunteer hearts of Corinna and Brian doing welcome to ceremonies, smoking ceremonies and dance, there's only two questions that need to be asked. If not now, when? And if not us, who? It's all about personal responsibility because there are ways of making the Wadawong Nation independent through education, tourism and new media that will provide jobs and a future for the next Wadawong generations. And not only them, but for the non-Indigenous people who want to engage too. I think that modern culture and Aboriginal culture need each other more than they know. We're here, we're still fighting, we're still gonna do it. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. We will not go away.